My name is Wendy Weir and I'm Executive Director of Advocacy and Development at the Australia Council for the Arts. I'm a woman in her 40s with short blonde hair, wearing a cream shirt, in a room filled with light, art and plants. I'm speaking to you from the Wongal country in the Aora Nation, land that has been home to culture and creativity for over 70,000 years. I acknowledge the traditional custodians and their elders past and present, along with any First Nations people who are joining us today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Know My Name. This event is being held at a time when so much of our world is at a crossroads, politically, socially, environmentally. And of course, it's at a time where our cultural sector continues to reel from the impacts of COVID-19. When the Me Too movement dominated the media headlines, like so many women, I found myself surfacing trauma long buried. Because like most women my age, I've been sexually harassed and sexually assaulted. Because I'm a woman, throughout my life I've been overlooked and spoken over, underestimated and underpaid, under-recognised, patronised. As the mother of two young daughters, I have been heartened by the gains that have been made in my lifetime. My daughters look at cultural artefacts from the olden days, read the 1980s, and marvel at the casual sexism that pervaded the popular culture of their mother's youth. That's a sign of progression, but there's a long way to go before we hit equity. As a white passing woman, my experiences have not, however, been burdened with issues of representation, systemic disadvantage, and exclusion faced by millions of others along lines of race, sexuality, ability, religion, class, and cultural background. Experience is complex, and certainly not about simple categories like women and men. In the wake of Me Too, the Black Lives Matter movement is prompting deep reflection and recognition of injustice, inequality and racism, as well as the need for systemic social and industrial change. Elevating diverse voices and the centrality of First Nations in Australia's culture and promoting diverse engagement is crucial to the relevance, resonance and future success of creative work, as well as our social licence to operate in a publicly funded arts context. This pandemic has exposed numerous fault lines of deep inequity and starved the ecosystems of so many industries, including ours. Despite all of this and the havoc it has wrought, I, like many others, feel perversely optimistic. This is not a moment of restoration. Reimagining, much like pivot, is swiftly becoming the next overused term of this cultural moment, but this is undeniably a time where major social and cultural transformations seem possible, even inevitable. Over the years, there have been hard-won gains for First Nations people, people of colour, deaf and disabled people, queer and non-binary people, as well as women. But for many with these lived experiences, change has been at a glacial pace. Now, the moment calls for more. There is no room for complacency about issues of social equity, particularly when historical gains may be lost amidst the turbulence of these times. And in this, Know My Name represents a significant moment, celebrating Australian women artists, curators, intellectuals and provocateurs now and into the future. And there is much to celebrate. Australian women have significantly higher rates of cultural participation than men, and they are more prominent as arts consumers. Women also identify more strongly with the arts than men, and they are also more aware of the wider importance of arts and creativity in society, such as the role of arts in education, for example. We get it. We know how important it is for our culture, our connections, and our kids. But despite decades of political mobilisation and these high rates of participation, the gender pay gap in the Australian arts sector persists and at a greater rate than in other sectors. Australian women artists continue to earn less than their male counterparts, on average 25% less, when the overall workforce gender pay gap is 16%. This is inexcusable and nothing to do with talent. Women artists also earn 30% less from their creative work, which is also significantly underrepresented in gallery collections. And, as the Countess report definitively revealed, the art media has largely ignored the creative work of women. This low media representation, far lower even than representation in exhibition and gallery rosters, has been a major contributor to the low visibility of women artists. I want to finish with a story. 
a story about the time Lena Nidavi was commissioned to design a piece for the rooftop terrace of the Musée du Quai Morley in Paris. This was part of an extraordinary partnership with the Australia Council, the Howard Mitchell Foundation and the MQB. After installing her work, Deo Lumrum, or Barramundi Scales, inspired by her mother's homeland in Deo country, it was time to go home. Mrs Nidabi boarded her plane in Paris and settled into her seat, bracing herself for the long journey back to the Kimberley. But before the flight took off, there was an unexpected announcement from the flight deck. The announcement was that Lini Nidabi was on the plane. And on hearing that, the entire plane erupted into applause and then a standing ovation. There had been so much media around the installation that everyone on that plane knew her name. That was a rare and magical moment, a moment of the world as it should be. It is a recognised human right that everybody, regardless of background and circumstance, has the opportunity to participate in arts and culture. It is essential that these contributions are recognised and rewarded. It is essential for reasons of social justice, but also in order to realise our full potential as a society, as a culture, as an industry. Extraordinary talent can come from so many places. It is a grave dereliction to assume it can only emerge from a subsection of society. The Australia Council and the NGA both recognise the immense public value of arts and creativity and the need to ensure that all voices are heard, recognised and celebrated in our collective creative pursuits. As such, we're pleased to be partners in this conference and I'm thrilled to help introduce the program today. I wish you all a wonderful, productive and suitably disruptive conference. May great things come from this meeting of creative minds. Thank you.